Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here and I really do appreciate your time. First off, I just wanted to say happy Father's Day to all the good fathers, all the men that step up to the plate, that handle their business, that take care of their families, that are protective and loving and nurturing and do what they gotta do every single day. I don't wanna brush past this or make Father's Day seem insignificant. Um, you guys are important the fathers that are making a difference are important so i just wanted to say thank you so much and happy father's day so moving right along um i wanted to give my brief commentary or more or less reaction to these two videos i came across yesterday one of them is from the infamous kevin samuels and the other one will be by cynthia g and it's pretty interesting because um, they are both actually talking about the same thing and basically saying the same exact things, you know In one of the videos Kevin Samuels. Well, it's it's a clip rather from Kevin Samuels to one of his lives And he's basically talking about how you know Men always want to talk about leading and you know, they wanting a woman to submit but then they want to kind of you know Take a completely different role when it comes to the expenses men don't want to well, I won't say men in general, um, but what appears to be uh, a loud minor minority, hopefully, seem to have issues with being the sole provider or the main provider in relationships. And so that's where you're kind of getting this 50-50 conversation, which I believe is absolutely ridiculous. T to anyone who has been in a long-term relationship where you are uh, living with your partner, you know that there is no such thing as actual 50-50 there's always someone who's going to be giving more momentarily whether it's financially or of their time of their effort of their physical labor of their emotional labor like that's not that's not a real thing um however a lot of times when these men are talking about 50 50 they are specifically and exclusively only talking about the finances and somehow they are still expecting submissive wives while their wives are paying 50 percent of the finances which to me is completely unfair because if you just think about it if you're a woman right and your man is asking you to be 50 50 for the bills if he's still expecting you to fulfill 100 percent of everything that you know that's expected of a traditional woman or you know a traditional wife so that means you're doing 100 percent of the child raising 100 percent of the cooking 100 percent of the cleaning 100 percent of all the other you know things expected from you as a wife like organizing his life and you know providing emotional support and and just doing all those other things he's still expecting you to do that as well as work and help him pay these bills if that's the life that you would like to live sis that's great for you but i could never so <laughs> uh yeah kevin samuels is talking about this and he's saying like hey like if you're not willing to pay all the bills or you know pay for everything rather then the only place that you can be leading is in the bedroom so let, let's let's quickly watch this this little clip but you don't want to put the work in you don't want to you don't want to build the resume you don't want to actually have it where it counts to have the real leverage you want her to respect your masculinity and your manhood because you have a penis and the an xy chromosome it don't work that way women respect resources you can't check a bitch because you got nothing check you got nothing to check with the only place you dominate is in the bedroom dominate on the balance sheet dominate on your wallet which is your accomplishments any woman that you deal choose to deal with her money should be no good with you if you're a hundred percent man you pay everything why because it keeps her in her feelings so Kevin Samuels is like, hey, listen, if you want to be the man, if you want to lead, then you got to lead with your wallet. Women respect, you know, men who can do things for them. And that's the bottom line. And I completely agree with that. I was having a conversation with my husband last night and I said to him like, hey, when I was dating and I met certain guys, they were nice guys. You know, they weren't horrible, you know, you know, guys. But ultimately, I knew if. You know, because at the time I was dating for marriage, if you were going to end up as my husband, then I would need you to have certain qualities. I would need you to be able to do at least two basic things for me. And that is 
physically protect my body, be able to physically protect my body. Um, I need to feel safe around you and in your presence, as well as I need you to be able to financially provide for me. If you couldn't do those two things, then I can't marry you. I, I, I couldn't limit myself to you exclusively because I would then have to supplement what I'm missing from other men. And so, listen, that may sound, you know, harsh, you know, but that's the reality of things. Like, those are my two basic standards. So upon everything else, if you couldn't do those two things for me, you know, I wasn't marrying you. But yeah, so let's uh, move on to Cynthia's video. So this clip is a little bit longer. She is um, having a conversation with a, a white caller, a white male. He called into her show and he is, you know, basically sharing why he feels black men are not a threat to him and other, you know, white men in his community. He speaks about, you know, why he doesn't understand why black men are asking you know black women to be more feminine and to quote unquote allow us to lead y'all and he's saying that it, that, that that is not how it works like you have to lead because that's what you do as a man like and he's you know he's basically saying that it doesn't make sense that they are asking that black men are asking black women to be more submissive and more feminine when there's so much that black women have culturally had to do to maintain their household without a man's help for years. So it's he's saying that it doesn't make sense, you know, that you don't want to step up to the plate and leave, but then you also want to demand submissiveness and, and you know, all, all this other stuff. So I'm playing this video not because I want to kind of like rub this in your face and, you know, rub this in black men's faces or anything along that line, um, along those lines rather. It's more because I think... Um, this perspective needs to be shared and unfortunately a lot of times a lot of the good black men who are doing this already who are running their households with love and structure that are being healthy patriarchs they don't have large platforms right they're not social media personalities so they're not up here talking and kind of spreading the message and giving black men other black men directions about how to do the same thing so what what we're left with is the men who are the ones that you see talking all the time <laughs> and um this again this clip is not to say that there's no black men out here doing this i'm not at all saying that i'm actually myself married to a black man who is doing this currently for me which is why i celebrated him yesterday however i am well aware that there you know that my husband is a kind of black man that is not common i will say that so yeah in this video uh the the white guy is you know addressing a lot of the talking points that black men will give as excuses such as feminism took us out the home and you know black women don't want to let us lead and all this other foolishness and he's basically just saying like you know yeah that's bullshit so let's take a listen and um yeah so what was it that you guys did to where Feminism and welfare wasn't able to emasculate you. Welfare programs were initiated in America for war widows, first and foremost. So it was like, you know, a guarantee that you had some source, um, some ability to provide beyond whatever Social Security paid back then for $50, I think, 1940. Um, <clears throat> right now, as it is, you know, white people, people like me, European ancestors, European Americans, whatever. Um, are the dominant people in America still. So the highest number and concentration of people that are collecting welfare benefits are white people, people that live in West Virginia, people in Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, back with Ohio, back with Pennsylvania and upstate New York, I mean, places like that. There's an awful lot of white trash in America. There's a lot of black trash. There's, right. there's a lot of trash, period. A lot of poor people in America. Um, I, 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 black men fought in World War One and World War Two. Um, black women fought World War One, World War Two. They came back home and experienced, I guess, maybe a different kind of emotional response to trauma, to PTSD. Maybe people of my ancestry are just built better to maintain a better morale in that kind of high stress situation. Uh, I really can't tell. I don't live in your community. You know, like I know of your community. I live around it. I don't live in it, so I don't know how to experience life as a Black American, mm -hmm. so to say. Um, Um, yeah, because they say a lot that, you know, welfare took them out of the home. 
um, no, feminism, no, 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 demand no, no, no. them. Supplemental. Yeah. Welfare is supplemental and makes up for the, for the lack uh, of a man being in the house. I mean, listen, if you have children indiscriminately with people and you don't care where you're blowing your loads, you feel consequences. The condom is really not that great, but you know, I didn't want to have 30 children with my wife, so I still use them. 37 years old, I have gray hair in my beard. I um, you know, have a receding hairline. Yeah, I'm still you know, making love to my wife every single night, almost. Uh, still wearing condoms, because I don't want to have any more kids. It's just that fucking simple. And they're free at every Planned Parenthood, which is pretty much every single city in the United States. You can go online, and you can get a whole box, mail your ass for free. If, you know, if black men want to continue to be ridiculously uh, irresponsible in a sexual manner, then they could deal with the consequences of losing driver's license, losing the mm-hmm. ability to have money or a bank account, having their credit destroyed. That's a choice. You're making a choice. At the end of the day, you're choosing who to bed down with. I mean, I mean, for women, it's different, I guess, if you get raped. But you, yeah. you can't rape a man and, you know, a baby grows in his ass and he shits it out. I mean, it doesn't work that way. You know, men are making a, a proactive choice to just be ridiculous and be completely sexually irresponsible. And I've seen a lot of that. I mean, I think the statistics are 77% mm-hmm. of black babies in America are born to unwed mothers. It doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't no father in the house, but there's, that means that there's no, uh, you know, marriage. Marriage to me is probably a lot different in meaning and understanding to the black community. Marriage to me is just an easier way to do taxes. Well, because the thing of it is, is when you talk about, you know, single mothers and this is a thing that, you know, I'll go back to Tariq because I used to follow him as well. And, you know, in, in our community, you know, they blame single mothers on the women. They'll say, well, black women are being these single mothers. Like, what do you guys think in terms of like, when you look at the black community and you think about single mothers, like who do you guys from your perception? Cause again, the bottom line of it is, is we're an integrated society. So we have to share spaces with you guys. We have to talk to you. We have to consider what your perspective is of our people. It just is what it is. You guys have the the social dominance. You write the laws and stuff. So we have to consider it. When you guys look at single mothers in the black community, who do you guys think are responsible for those? Man, when when an unmarried couple has a child at the hospital by law, the mother is sole custodian, custodian of the child. So if you were you and I were to have a child, which is not going to happen, but whatever, hypothetically yeah. speaking, yeah, you would you would immediately retain 100% uh, custody of that child, and then I would have to you know go through child support assessments and, and maintenance for like whatever your household income is lacking or whatever you're needing for the child that so i mean it's, it's 100 percent on the map i mean it's their, their choice to uh engage in these political systems they don't need to be abolished at all i think they should be expanded to help more single mothers that happily pay a lot more taxes so that children could have better meals better education their clothes better transportation uh, mental health screening, medicine, hospitalizations, books and toys and iPads and all the, all the other crap that I donate to random charities. Uh, I would love to help your community more, but you know, I would kind of need your men to meet me halfway. I can't do all the like work on my own to yeah. uh, disperse equality, so to speak, because the government kind of just says, this is what's equal to all people and this is what it is. I really think it would be beneficial to have conversations with people outside of your community. And this is actually what I was telling black women before you called in. You know, white men, Asian men, Hispanic men, they have a different perspective than black men do because they're the different socialization. So, I mean, we don't ever hear on YouTube or any social media space, large groups of of white men, even though you recognize that, you know, there's single mothers everywhere, obviously, but you guys don't ever get on public platforms and you don't, you know, basically verbally crucify women for becoming, for for being single mothers, because obviously, you know, you just said it yourself, it's the men, the men, the men are doing it because the men, control marriage um the men you know if if they don't want to be if they don't want to impregnate a woman they don't have to but you have black men going around and and the reason i'm asking this is for black women because it it's and maybe you know the black men who listen they can 
learn too, because I do notice and I agree with you, it's even difficult for me as a black woman to have a discussion with a black man where he doesn't get he doesn't get angry or 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 like disrespectful or very aggressive, especially when you talk about, you know, single mothers, you know, black men taking accountability for um, children that they create. So I think that it will be really beneficial to have more dialogues and more discussions about, you know, your perception of our community, because ultimately, like I said, you guys are the ones writing legislation and enforcing it. So pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. I mean, I, I think that a lot of things he said was common sense, right? Or should be, what should be common sense? I think he's just, you know, giving a, a very grounded, real perspective that I don't think, you know, a lot of times we get to hear. So that's why I wanted to share that um, as well. Kudos to Cynthia G for having this conversation, you know, having the platform and, you know, allowing this man to speak because I think what, you know, some of the things that he said was very important, very relevant. The reality is not everyone's gonna be saved, right? So in the black community, not every single black person is going to be saved and this is something that i say all the time especially when i'm speaking on clubhouse is that some people are going to be left behind not everyone's going to be able to come not everyone's going to want to progress not everyone's going to want to break generational curses not everyone's going to want to do the work to produce different results that's just about that's just the reality both black men and black women there are bad there are black people in general who do not want to do the things necessary to have a different outcome that will largely benefit our community bring us up stabilize our families and you know create better futures not everyone wants to do that work so you're going to have the black men and black women who are set to repeat the past and they are okay with that and they don't want to do anything differently and they are not interested in being responsible and you know basically using their the power that they do have to make different choices in their life and those are the ones who are going to be left behind and the black men and the black women who are interested in having a difference for the future are going to do things differently a lot of people think that you know change starts with you know large large global efforts but it's not it's about what you do within your own household how you touch the lives of the people that you know that you interact with every day and if as a man you're out here getting all these women pregnant and you're being irresponsible and you're not utilizing the things that you can you know simple things to stop children from being born from your you know irresponsibility and your carelessness you're not doing anything different if you're a black woman and you're out here having, you know, letting men have raw sex with you and you're not protecting your womb and yourself and children are born out of that and you're having, you know, children with a man that you could tell can barely take care of himself, sis, you're not doing anything different. You are a part of the problem. Both of you are a part of the problem. The black people who are trying to move forward, who are trying to do things differently. So if you ain't girl, if you ain't sir, then cool. Y'all will be left to be a statistic. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you would like to hear more of my commentary, please make sure you are subscribed and make sure that you have your notifications bell turned on so you don't miss anything that I put out. So if you are agreeing with anything that I said in the video or if you're not, please comment below. But yes, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.